This is the truth behind the EPMD uh, DJ Scratch versus EPMD beef or EPMD versus DJ Scratch beef. Because it's hard to call it a beef when one side is fighting and the other side is like, we ain't fighting. But here's the problem that happens a lot of the times with groups who have DJs. When the money comes, this is what the problems have. Salt and Pepper went through this same process. Except with Salt and Pepper, Spinderella, I felt, deserved some more of that money. Because once the big money came and the payoff came, they kind of shorted Spinderella. And they were like, whoa, like that was kind of foul. When she stepped up and actually got on the mic and actually rapped. You know what I'm saying? So I'm like, look, she actually became part of... Y'all went from a duo to a trio. <laughs> so, on that note, I felt they was a little bogus for that. And then they kind of went their own ways for a while without Spinderella because of, you know, what happened. So, in this situation, EPMD... You know, Eric and Parrish, both of these guys can't come together to conduct business the right way because you got everybody not really trusting of the other person, but they know together the brand of EPMD is stronger than them individually. And Eric Sermon's not concerned about what he's making from EPMD because he's still making money off of uh, Marvin Gaye's uh, music song that he produced. They gave him some of the, um, they felt, the family of Marvin Gaye felt that Eric Sermon deserved some of the uh, publishing from that song. They said, no, you deserve publishing rights for this because you did it the right way. You know, so the song became a hit and every year that song is still making good, decent money for Eric Sermon. So Eric don't have to really work. You know, that song pays his bills. He's making thousands of dollars a month off that song <laughs> so he really haven't had to make any music so him coming out doing these little tours and shows is because he want to get back out there to make some extra money <laughs> and they doing the EPMD shows and and all of this stuff but there's really no demand for EPMD as much as it was back then they kind of missed their boat you know they left out when they should have been doing old songs and stuff they were trying to make newer songs and while Eric gone for all that time, you know, Paris was always a shady business guy, you know. He was always looking out for Paris, which is supposed to do. But as a group, you got to make sure everybody's getting, you know, their equal share. So a lot of shows they were doing, you weren't seeing DJ Scratch at all of them. You see him at, uh, I think Scratch did like maybe two shows that I remember. And then it was no DJ Scratch. And that was in 2014. And 2015, I think, was the last time they seen him. And that's why he put out the statement on Instagram. Because he wanted everybody to know why he wasn't there anymore. And he said, a year ago tonight was my last show I did with my former group. I was tired of the lies, the money stealing, and the sneaking around doing shows without me to keep more bread in their pocket. Meanwhile, ruining the brand. So, here's my 2016 wrap-up. Right after I left the group, I upgraded and relaunched ScratchVision.com. Went on a world tour of my own. Then was the opening act for Beyonce's tour. Signed an endorsement deal with Monster Energy Drink, then went on a Monster Energy Tour, still on tour right now, launched my own app, then I was knighted as Grandmaster by Cool Herc. Then did the scratches on the album of the year, A Tribe Called Quest, and to top it off, I'm now the special guest DJ with The Tribe Called Quest. I left the group who couldn't afford to pay one DJ and joined the group that can afford to pay two DJs. So from now on, 
I'll stick with the group that makes a hundred thousand minimum per show instead of the group that makes six thousand maximum per show. For 2017, remove the toxic energy out of your life and watch how many blessings you'll receive. Happy New Year. Never get bitter, just get better. The thought they they thought they buried me, but they forgot I was a seed. So that's what uh, DJ Scratch put down. Now, when DJ Scratch got there, the production level of EPMD, for those who don't know or too young to understand, two of the greatest albums in hip-hop history, Unfinished Business and Business as Usual, including Business Never Personal. Their first album is a great album, but it was nothing compared to those three out of the four. So... People still love Funky Piano and play that. Business as usual is up in, as people call that, one of the best albums of all, of all time in hip hop. It's up there. <coughs> so, I got to say on this thing, you know, EPMD always had these problems. K Solo had to beat up, wanted to beat up Eric Sermon. He wanted to beat up uh, Parrish and them for not paying the money. They had to get an order of protection put out against um, a K Solo for not getting his money. So EPMD has always had this problem with their talent. So you could tell that it's the business and that's it. It's just the business end of it. They cannot get things together. And I'm happy for Scratch because he's, he is one of the best DJs out there. And he deserved to get his money. It's your boy Carcino, and I'm out.